Color Campus Podcast, a high level of conversation on live hip-hop daily.tv. Got my man Pop with me. What up, boy? What's happening? What's good? What's man, good? for one, you a superstar at this moment, man. Oh, you man. you going Come viral on, all on man. Instagram without you even having to have your hands on the business, on, man. man. But we, we go- do we do this because we got to do it, right? I, I feel you, bro, man. Yeah, we we going to get into that in a tad bit later, man. But um, for those who don't know who you are, man, bro, how who are you and how did you get into um, to realize that art and design was going to be part of your life? Man, I'm, I'm William Floyd, a.k.a. King Pop. That's my persona. Yeah. I started that whole situation back in college, actually. I was um, going to the Art Institute of Atlanta for uh, graphic design. And, okay. Um, at the time... Um, I really was like more like a, a basketball dude, you know. You who? Um, yeah, I played college ball. Bruh. <laughs> Might put some sneakers on, man. All right, what are you? I'm like, I ain't I'm much of nothing now because I'm focused on, you know what I mean? Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. So you started off with the hoop dreams. Yeah, I yeah. started off as, with the hoop dreams, you know what I mean? Uh, started off up in the Boys and Girls Club, yeah. you know what I mean? And, um, you know, everybody was pushing that. Like yeah, basketball, of course. basketball, basketball. Nobody really knew that I had the hidden talent of, you know, being an artist, yeah. you know, having this, you know, real live passion for fashion yeah. you know what i mean nobody knew that or whatever so you know that's something that i always knew like that if basketball didn't work out this was like something that was like my my plan b type okay. thing or whatever that's a solid so, plan b you have man yeah yeah that's yeah, a solid plan yeah, b man yeah. um is there a favorite medium you have to work in like like as far as like how you put out your art um man honestly man like currently it's just um i think um anything that's like more of a, like a tangible product like that's kind of like my medium right okay. now like i'm i'm really like kind of like focusing in on just like being able to like you know develop some products and you know deliver some things that people wouldn't necessarily say that an artist would you know actually have yeah. their hands on that's kind of like my my medium now but it started off with um like um more i would say acrylics mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying oils um i was more of a, a painter yeah yeah okay are they were there any um artists or any any creatives that that inspired you as far as like when you when you did realize that this was going to be something that you was going to pursue as a career was there anybody who you were looking at who inspired you as far as your talent and and what you was imagining mm, man you know starting off i would say there were several artists that that i that i studied um like the most influential probably would be like Keith Haring. Really? You know oh, I, I mean? see that. I see that. I can see that, especially yeah. when I think about your work right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Keith yeah. Haring's dope. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, he had you know he had a lot of like you know uh, simplicity to his work. Yeah. But he had like a message or whatever. You know what I mean? It was like a real message. Beside, it was like a a hidden gem in all of his work or whatever. He always was trying to like basically you know, spread positivity and, mm-hmm. and, you know, trying to raise awareness about different epidemics that might have been going on. Man, AIDS especially, time. you know? Definitely, yeah, yeah, AIDS he was especially. big on that, yeah. big on, the, um, you know, the crack epidemic, you know? So, you know, that's that's kind of like what I've been doing. Yeah. Like right now, like my whole hidden message, uh, uh, not even really, I wouldn't say it's hidden, um, cause it's right in front of your face, but it, you know, some people like don't really like, you know, look at that. They just, you know, surface type of people or whatever. But, um, I would say right now my focus is just making sure that, that the culture is protected as far as the hip hop culture and just African-American art and African-American history. You know what I mean? Cause a lot of times like, you know, um, as you know, years go by or, or different things happen or whatever. A lot of times there there, there are a lot of different um, artists or different influential people who have, you know, um, made different things um, easier for, for the next generation. But a lot of times those things don't necessarily, you know, gain the, the, the daylight or yeah. whatever. So that's that's kind of what I try to do and, 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 you know, show that through my heart. Yeah. You know, I feel like when you, when you speak like that, um, yourself and Chilio, like I watch y'all around the city, man, and y'all are so influential just by speaking the to OG these. right there. Yeah, by speaking to these young kids, man, and, and reminding them that it's cool to be what you would, I guess, call black weird. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I grew up the same way you did. I grew up playing ball to the point where, like, my brother's a coach, all that. Like, it was supposed to be you play basketball. you 6'3". You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you got yeah. a decent jump shot. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Nobody ever asked me if I wrote. 
You know right, what I'm saying? Right, like, right, right. Nobody right. ever said, yo, why do you read all those books? Do you like writing more than you like playing ball? Like, so I think it's dope more than anything that y'all kind of get out here and inspire these kids to be that kind of weird kid, you know what I'm saying? Where you use a talent that maybe other people don't even know you have. Definitely. It's funny yeah. that you even brought up Chili L because, like, um, he was actually one of the first people um, with the whole fashion uh, uh, world or whatever at the time. He, he really had the whole um, ATL in. Uh, joint jumping or whatever and that's kind of like around the same time that I, I had jumped into business or whatever and you know at the time he had he had um he was able to kind of like reach you know cer certain people and you know kind of like basically start to like develop his brand and like de develop the lifestyle around his brand or whatever and you know I had went to him or whatever you know what I mean he was like the OG you know what I mean I'm always like looking for information, yeah. you know, and, and looking for the right wisdom and the right direction and the right, you know, um, understanding about anything that I'm trying to get into. And, that, you know, I feel like that's something that has been very important to the development and my growth and then just the development as my, my overall business sense and how to be savvy in the business or whatever. And, you know, yeah. kind of like, you know, avoid some of the pitfalls that some of the other people may have, you know, had you know um you know during their time or whatever yeah, well, so definitely. definitely man shout out to chili yo man iron sharpens iron man because like <laughs> i say i be around them edgewood kids man i've been lurching all them they inspired me to do a whole lot of stuff and i'm like i don't even draw you know what i'm saying <laughs> like I, they, they definitely inspired me in a whole lot of ways man so you've actually put your stamp on a lot of different things outside of just you know saying when we see the the, the say the signature logo shirts you've done yeah. a lot like i was talking to my man b down at dazed arts yesterday and he said yo yeah you know pop used to yeah. he used to say you know pop made of damn remote you know i'd be talking pop made the remote control man for Mr. Bishy <laughs> <laughs> ask, ask him about that shout it yo is facts, that true facts. man that's my boy um yeah man it's crazy man um I actually right out of college my first introduction to design was industrial design okay so and um you know I started off believe it or not I didn't even start off in the the marketing department or the design department or whatever I actually started off in the sales department <laughs> right out of college you know what i'm saying um guy uh i was working at the time i was working at um at nordstrom's i sold men's clothing you know men's suits and stuff like that so imagine me i was like yeah right up, know what I mean? I'm, I'm trying to pitch that right now <laughs> beginning to know k-pop <laughs> yeah okay suited up pop all right yeah, so I, I learned the business like i learned how to like fit people you know what I mean? Um, I, I spent time in the tailor shop, you know okay. what I mean? Like how to, you know, sew and all of that good stuff or whatever. So, you know, um, the guy from Mitsubishi, you know, he came in or whatever. He was buying clothes. He was like, yo, I like your sales pitch or whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know, what do you think about the opportunity after you finish school um, at Mitsubishi? And I was like, sure, like, why not? Or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Fast forward. You know what I mean? We ain't going to talk about the sales department. We're going to jump right, right in. Hell yeah, man. The, yeah. the marketing get, department. Get to that part. Um, and basically, you know, um, I would get like various different tasks. You know what I mean? Like, and I would just knock them out, knock them out, knock them out. Most of the, the tasks normally were like internal. So I would do like different you know um things for like let's say the 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 operations department the accounting department and then you know um they gain i gained i gained the trust their trust you know the, the marketing guys the advertising guys the directors like i gained their trust or whatever and he put the the um the project of of you know redesigning some of the the buttons on a, a remote control <laughs> or whatever and you know i banged it out and like less than like an hour yeah, like that's crazy these hell. designs or whatever what do you think yeah. and they sent it over to japan and japan sent it back it was like that's it that's the one right there and i was like okay we we good like, man like, that's that black like, magic right there bro <laughs> yeah when b told me that yesterday i was like for real he said man ask yeah. him shawty ask yeah. him yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he yeah, did yeah, that yeah, yeah. you know we 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 we, we um initially we was talking about the culture of atlanta you know saying definitely art is a huge part of this culture um but we're also in the mix of seeing the city turn and change in a lot of ways. Like today we have a vote, you know what I'm saying? We're voting for a new mayor, new city council. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these new people are not going to like some of the things they're seeing down on these walls. They're not going to be- Not in, at all. Yeah, as, as, as they're not going to embrace the art as much as, as the other people did. Is that a fear of yours? And have y'all, have has the art scene around the area started figuring out ways to kind of protect their art? And not only protect their art, but start making their own locations to yeah. house this art. Yeah. It's crazy, man, because like, honestly, you know, I've watched the city like grow, you know what I'm saying? And like grow and develop and, and actually like have like certain areas that they 
designate for artists mm-hmm. to do exactly, you know, um, what they do as as far as, you know, muralists, graffiti artists and yeah. things of that nature or whatever. But, you know, I think, you know, I really still think that we're so far behind, you know, as far as just the overall platforms and the overall opportunities for artists. You I know agree. what I mean? Like me personally, you know, I'm a hustler, so I'm gonna find a way to make, you know what I'm saying, anything happen or whatever. But I feel like for some of the 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 new the generation that's coming or whatever behind me or whatever, I feel like a lot of them have resulted to like doing social media things and things yeah. that may not necessarily be hands on and, and be more of a, a um impact on where they currently are or whatever and you know it's a it's a it's a it's a good and a bad you know what i'm saying with that or whatever and i think you know if there were more opportunities that were more tangible opportunities right mm-hmm. in front of your your face opportunities i feel like that would take them away from feeling like they got to do all of this social media stuff or no. whatever so you know I feel you. like it's not necessarily new york and it's not necessarily la just right. yet where they actually do have like some kind of I don't want to say they don't love the culture of art down here, but it's it's a different breed when you go to the Definitely. East Coast and the West Coast about Definitely. that. That's what's up, man. But you're doing your part as far as making maintaining that and keeping people on their toes. Man, Definitely. Hey, man. that's 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 the uh that's one that's the one thing that I can say, man, like my whole like purpose and my whole like um you know, platform and what I stand on is just like really providing opportunities for other artists or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, cause at the end of the day, it's like, it's so many different facets of art. There's so many different opportunities outside of just me personally and what I can do for artists or what an artist can do for mm-hmm. me. There's so many other opportunities, but a lot of times I don't feel like they think that those opportunities exist or they don't feel like playing the politics of those opportunities or whatever. And you know, a lot of times that kind of like, you know, um, makes them shy away from actually like jumping into those different you know uh positions or those different circles or whatever just because of the politics that they, they have to True. go through True. so you know i'm just one of them type of people like <laughs> man like i don't do the politics I, I really you know what i mean obviously you have to know how to play that game but i feel like if you dope if you have you know a dope work ethic you know and and you're persistent and you're you're focused on whatever vision and goals that you have as as an artist or you know anybody that you know what i'm saying has any goals or any dreams that they want to accomplish or whatever i feel like they're they they'll be able to do it even regardless to the politics that people try to play that's what's up man uh well one one other brand that i know i've seen you work with is on um, rap snacks yeah how did that whole situation um um come together you know what i'm saying and, and and i guess you know are you still working with them because what's the, what's going to be the next line because i know i've seen the migos i've seen the fetty wops i've seen yeah. the fabulouses like who's going to be the next i guess the next line for that it's funny man they got um they got a couple of different uh artists coming up i think um uh, little Yachty, um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trina got some chips coming out. Okay. Um, they're doing another thing with um, with Migos, um, with the um, they got to man. Migos, popcorn, Migos jumped that off with the minute they said with um, a bag with a dab of ranch. It was right, over. Right, boy. right. They're actually working on some candies. Oh, okay. Or whatever too. So, um, yeah, it's 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 crazy how that opportunity came. I actually went with the um, I went to school with. Um, Daisha, Daisha Ware, she's actually. Uh, shout out Daisha, yeah, man. That's the homie. Daisha, yeah. She actually like plugged me with that. We had worked on some some things in the past or whatever, and she presented an opportunity uh, to me or whatever. And you know, I, I wasn't um, fully knowledgeable of the company or whatever because you know they originated out of Philly. Okay, I didn't, um, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So it's a it's a it's a it's a long uh, like the company been around twenty years. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people think it's a new thing, but the company's been around for quite some time. Yeah. Um, James Fly, Fly Lindsay, he actually founded the company, and um, him and Master P and you know a couple of other business partners, you know what I mean, actually developed, you know, the brand or whatever over the years. Um, and now um, everything's just like full, come full circle, yeah. uh, social media, man. You know man, I mean? they outlived Homeboy Chips. Cause I remember <laughs> growing up as a kid with Homeboy Chips yeah. and I was like, these are never gonna <laughs> live. But they did, boy, they 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 lived past that. So that's that's a salute. Yeah. So that's what's up, man. So and you're still working with them, correct? I'm still working with them. I'm still yeah. working with them. Um, I I didn't want to like just pigeonhole myself to working with them solely on just the the you know the chips nah, packaging itself. I feel like I kind of like 
stamped it and yeah. I was like, yo, let's do some other things or whatever. So we, we actually uh talking about doing some other things that I think that's gonna be pretty cool and people will be excited that's about. That's cool that they give up. you that lane though, because sometimes man when people people try to pigeonhole you quickly, dude. You know, like I'm the I'm the weed guy. Like I hate being the weed guy. Like yeah. I, I, I do a whole <laughs> lot more than talk about weed all day. You know what I'm saying? But people will pigeonhole you so quick, right, man. So right, I'm glad right. they gave you that lane to be creative in right. other lanes, man. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely, man. Shout out to James, man. He's actually uh Meek um, Meek Mills manager or is whatever it? as well too. So yeah, man. Shout out to Meek, man. Free Meek, man. man free Meek. Meek yeah. is the reason why I voted no on all y'all judges today. So <laughs> serious, like, if some of y'all don't get put back in your position, it's because of Meek Mills. Like I stood in solidarity on that today. Right, Jack. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> so man, look. Um, so this past weekend, man, in, in, in California was um, um Complex Con. Oh yeah. So I'm on Instagram scrolling, <laughs> doing my thing. I noticed um Andre 3000 was doing a live sketch, which was so bizarre. To yeah, me, that, I didn't even know he was gonna be there, yo. Let me tell you though, I saw you gift this man a jacket. Yeah. So you wasn't even that wasn't even a, a planned thing. It wasn't even planned, man. Bro. That was not planned. I, I went out to Complex Con, man, to enjoy the art, man, taking the culture. This is the second year for Complex yeah. Con. And Complex Con is an amazing thing for an artist, for a designer, for anybody who, you know, enjoys art or enjoys like um, they got they had designer toys like all sorts of things there, man. Like, it was like Mark Echo's mind exploded. Like I saw that shit, man. So crazy, yeah. man. So crazy, man. And like just the 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 whole media aspect of of how that all formulated and came together, man. Like with me being a student of just media, multimedia, like things in general, man. It was just a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. And for them to like leverage that with pop culture yeah, to man. allow people to really like, you know, yeah, you, you, you wanna be around the cool people, the popular people, but you also wanna be educated mm -hmm. in things that may you know, hold some value over the time, you know, over over a time period or yeah. whatever, man. And like the fact that they were able to do that and and have so much excitement around it or whatever is is, is just brilliant, man. So how did you end up with the in the position where you was able to um, hand him your jack the coach you made? Yeah, man. So so it's funny, man, because um I literally like when I was getting ready to like hop on my flight or whatever, um. I was like, damn man, I need a jacket. I need some. I need. A, I need to take a jacket or something. It might be chilly. You know what I mean? You know you gotta have <laughs> yeah. a light jacket. Be prepared. Or be ready. You know what I mean, so really, it was just. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was a jacket that I was gonna throw on, which I threw on or whatever I wore um, the first day of complex or whatever, and um, I just ran into. Andre sketching, live sketching. I'm like, oh, this is dope. He's sketching live right now. He has his sketchbook or whatever. He's sketching live. They actually have the live prompter, you know, yeah. so the audience can basically, you know, witness Andre do his thing or whatever, which, you know, Andre was doing his thing. You know what I mean? That's another talent that Andre has. I didn't, I mean? It's something I, I didn't even know he could do. You know, that's right. what blew my mind about the whole situation. Right, but. right, right. So I'm like over there like chilling like, okay. <laughs> And then, I, then it dawned on me, yo, I got on an Andre 3000 jacket, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I got other people like noticing I got on an Andre 3000 jacket. They like, yo, that's cool, like you got an Andre 3000 jacket? I'm like, oh yeah, damn, I do got on an Andre 3000 jacket. So I just like, you know, um, I get his attention or whatever, you know what I mean? I ain't no really no shy dude like that, yeah. you know what I mean? I was like, yo, Andre, you know what I mean? <laughs> I turned around and pointed to the back of my jacket. You know what I mean? Got basically got on the same, you know what I mean, the same print or whatever. Oh, you know show what do saying? right I'm now. Right now, you know what I mean? I, I. So um it was like it was like a, a situation where um once he realized that I had on a jacket or whatever, um, he kinda like you know what I mean? Gave me that look like, yo, you know what I'm saying? And it was the face. You know what I'm saying? Had That's what I was just thinking. On the, on so the face is on it? Bro, you you branded it out for real. You know like, what I mean? Yeah. Shout out LaFace. Yeah. It was like when I when I when I got it to him, he was like, yo, LaFace is gonna kill you. <laughs> you know what I mean? He was like, LaFace is gonna kill you. And I was like, you know what, man, it's just, it's it's a one of one. You know what I'm saying? I did this, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like <laughs> He said LaFace you know, is gonna kill you. Yeah, yeah. He was like, yo, LaFace is gonna kill you or whatever. You know what I mean? I was like, you know, I haven't mass produced these, you know what I'm saying? This is a one-on-one -on -one piece. I actually, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, I was rocking it or whatever, yeah. you know what I mean? Initially, I was like, yo, can you sign this or whatever? And he was like, 
do you have a marker or whatever? I was like, no, nah, I ain't even got no marker. I was like, you know what, man, you can have it. You know what I'm saying? He was like, really? I, I, I can have it? You know what I'm saying? So he was very excited to get the jacket or whatever. And yeah. I was like, okay, this is dope. This is, this, is, this is lit or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, it was a great opportunity. Um, you he's know, wearing the coat. Like, I saw him on Instagram wearing the jacket. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Yeah. He's like walking around now wearing yeah, the coat. Yeah, my homeboy, you know what I'm saying? He's, he, he's deep in the industry or whatever. He like randomly like hit me or whatever and was like, yo, uh, check, your, check your text message or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And he had like sent me like three or four pictures or whatever, you know what I mean, of, of, of Andre just like, you know, walking around with his lady, you know what I'm saying, out in like, you know, West Hollywood or something like that or whatever, you know what, Where, what I mean? Wearing your shit. And just rocking, <laughs> like rocking a jacket or whatever. And I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Like, that's, that's dope. Yeah. Like, this is why we do this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, as a designer, or whatever for me that's like a grammy you know what i'm saying like you know it's, it's like one of those things where you know um i wasn't even i wasn't even nominated but i won a grammy you yeah. feel me you know what i mean because a lot of times like people don't understand how how tough it is to break into an industry that for the most part there's not a lot of african americans who mm -hmm. are dominant or whatever and actually influential in any fashion world you know what yeah. i'm saying like yeah you we have our you know our kanye west's we have our pharrell we have our you know the designer for off-white we have those say, designers yeah, Virgil, you know Virgil, what i'm saying yeah. but you know there's still not as many of us in that industry or whatever so like you know anytime you can get those those kind of opportunities or whatever man you got to kind of like be like really like consistent and be like yo like this is what i want to do like check this out or yeah. whatever so that's kind of what happened well bro that was a huge look for you right there man. Ah, major you know um, um currently you know um our basil's coming up and i got a friend of mine my man um, um my man eric art 420 they doing an exhibit this year that consists of um cannabis and cannabis and paint like how oh, wow. weed inspires art that's lit um are you a consumer of cannabis man has it inspired you, know, you in any you way you know what that's funny man because you know i'm not even a smoker really i'm not even a smoker what are you man. doing around these degenerates man because this is all we do <laughs> i just you know what i mean like at the end of the day man like i i i appreciate the culture mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like you know obviously it's been a part of the hip-hop culture for for, for a very long time yeah. Um, but I'm such a creative, bro. Like, like I create on such a high level that that is like a high, like a okay. constant high or whatever. My mind, like, is always like thinking of like the next opportunity and how I'm just gonna flip somebody else's idea that wasn't able to actually like produce their idea or whatever. So like for me, like that's my high or whatever. And like, you know what I'm saying? Like I got a lot of homies, a lot of artists, you know what I'm saying, that that I associate with that obviously they smoke or whatever. But it's just like one of those things, like I never really needed it, you know what I'm saying, to like really like take my you know, my high to the next high. You yeah. know what I mean? All right, man. Well, that's good. It's okay. I ain't going to peer pressure you. <laughs> I ain't going to peer pressure you. It's not like we have Thanksgiving coming up or nothing. And I'm not going to be like, dog, you're not smoking. Right. But right, but right. We, we, you, we do know that you also have a music part of your life. Oh, yeah. You definitely. know what I'm saying? We got Pop Life ENT. You got an artist and all this other yeah. stuff. An yeah. artist has an artist. Hey, <laughs> you know what, man? When you got a platform yeah. or whatever, man, and like, you know, really to be honest with you, like, what I've been able to do, man, is really like open up like different lanes or whatever, just based on the energy and based on like the attention that I've been able to get, you know, with what 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 the, with what I do or whatever. And it's like I do so much with music indirectly, with doing covers and doing all of this. You know what I'm saying? Behind the stuff, you know, behind the scenes stuff as far as you know, marketing. You know what I mean? Distribution and all of those those facets or whatever. And it's like. I have the formula, you know what I mean, to be able to position someone, you know, um, in front of the right people or whatever. So it's like, why not give that opportunity to somebody that I believe in and, and somebody that I feel like is talented in his own right? Got you, man. Who's your new artist? Breon, man. Breon FPMG, man. Well, you know what I mean, they call, him light, they call him a light skinned Bobby. <laughs> light skinned Bobby? They call him light skinned Bobby or whatever, man. He, he you know, he's, uh, he's originally from Atlanta, you know what I'm saying, the east side. Or whatever he you know he's uh been working with me you know in, in development for the last two years or whatever and you know he's been a lot of different places with me and he's very serious and very um you know um serious and has a, a extreme work ethic or whatever so it's like for me it's like 
it was a no brainer for me to like say, all right, let me get this kid an opportunity or whatever, and like let me let me see what he can do with it and see if he really serious about it or whatever. So like you know he's still around, so you know, <laughs> That's and solid. I don't put him through it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't really like may try to make it that easy for him or whatever because it hasn't been easy for me. So obviously I'm like, yo, you got to go through it or whatever to kind of like get to a point where it's like, all right, we can do some other things, bro. You got to man. All right, so uh, we got Brian on in a second, man. In the meantime, just check out a couple of songs. We also we got we got his Jamaican girl on audio. <laughs> Grab that. On YouTube, we gonna spin that for a second, and when we get back. We gonna have Brianna on along with Pop, and we gonna talk about this whole music thing. We gonna talk about um, what the, I guess the next steps are for Pop Life, ENT, and Brian. So let's get it. All right, man, stay tuned for us, man. Cash Color Canvas Podcast, our level of conversation. We'll be right back with you. All right, brother. Let me get mm -hmm. Brianna together, man. I'm gonna mash all mics together.